Hey everyone, so today we will be starting off with a new chapter, The Lens, right? I'm Dr. Backbencher. Today we will study the relevant anatomy and physiology of the lens, right? Let's get straight into it. So here's a diagram I took from Wikipedia, right? And this shows the basic structure of the lens. So you can see that the lens is this transparent body, right, which is located behind the iris right here is the lens right this is the lens and this green uh, area which you're seeing it's the iris right up here we have the cornea and here's the conjunctiva covering the whole place right and here's the vitreous humor uh, here's the aqueous humor right the aqueous humor uh, has two uh, chambers right we have the anterior chamber and posterior chamber right we will study these chambers in, in, in later chapters right but now for now uh, lens right so lens is here you can see the lens right here okay. so oh oops okay so lens right you can see that there are these white fibers right and these white fibers are holding the lens in place and these white fibers are then attached to this this muscle kind of thing over here right these white fibers are actually called the suspensory ligaments of the lens right it suspends the lens it holds the lens in place right and the thing to which this is attached right this thing right here this area this place is called the ciliary body right we'll be studying these things right now in a second so the lens so the lens actually develops from the ectoderm right that's kind of interesting uh, just a good thing to know and there are other structures like the skin and the nervous system which are also derived from the ectoderm so uh, yeah interesting to know a little bit of its uh, embryology and the structure of the lens see the lens has a capsule the outermost then it has an epithelium it has fibers it has suspensory ligaments let's talk about each and every one of these so first of all let's draw a little lens here right uh, we will be needing this diagram so it has the anterior side uh, it has the posterior side which is a bit more curved right so this yellow outer covering you can think of it as the capsule if we actually zoom in on this capsule a little bit right and we, we take a close look at it under a microscope, we will see that it is actually composed of epithelial cells, right? And the epithelial cells, they are towards the underside. Let me let me show you what I mean. So, so for example, these are a few epithelial cells. Let me pause the video, I'll, I'll draw it. So here we are with a few epithelial cells, right? And we know from basic histology that epithelial cells always one of their sides is always attached to a basement membrane right and that is necessary because without the basement membrane they cannot stay in place let's make a little basement membrane here right basement membrane is not made of cells it is a, a connective tissue here is the basement membrane complete right so if i want to draw this diagram again what i would do is i would draw some epithelial cells here epithelial cell here 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 right let me pause the video again right so that is how it looks right the outer yellow capsule and inside it is lined by epithelia right and this epithelia is very specific this epithelia is actually cuboidal epithelium and one thing to remember about this epithelium is that it is uh, only located towards the anterior side this is the front right anterior or front capsule is all around the place but the cuboidal epithelium it is only towards the front side and one other interesting fact about uh, this epithelium is if you if we actually observe this epithelium closely very very closely we can see that this epithelium have these this uh, this this cuboidal epithelium ha actually has these little things on their surface right and and these raised things are there for a very good reason these are the places of attachment of lens fibers right what are lens fibers well inside the lens there is a whole network of fibers right and this kind of this this fibrous network kind of circles around the whole lens right it kind of it's it's somewhat like this okay these are called the lens fibers right and they're made up of a specific kind of protein and this gives lens its structure and shape these fibers have two zones in them right uh, they have the central zone let me take a different color a central zone which is called the nucleus and they have a peripheral zone 
and a, a peripheral zone which is called the cortex right and then again of course we have the ciliary body which we discussed uh, in, in, the, in the previous diagram which sends out these little uh, suspensory ligaments which attach to the capsule right from above and from below as well that is the basic structure of a lens so a capsule right it is the elastic transparent outer covering it and it is actually a basement membrane of the lens's epithelium right we just saw that the epithelium is cuboidal right as we saw it is unstratified as we also saw we and unstratified means it's not in layers it's just one single layer right and the apical ends right the apical ends are the ends which face towards the inside of the lens what what do they have they have raised projections right which attach to the lens fibers this is exactly what we saw in the diagram i made and then we saw the lens fibers right and we saw that there were two zones the outer zone was the cortex and the inner zone was the nucleus right and then we saw the suspensory ligaments as well which completed the whole picture what is a lens made of well it's mostly water right the place where i drew the fibers they actually they're they're, they're on they only occup occupy like 30 percent of the place right most of it is actually water 70 percent of it is water and 30 percent of it is protein and because it is avascular it does not receive any blood supply it cannot get oxygen right so most of its most of its cells they function through glycolysis right glycolysis is, is, is of course anaerobic right and it does not read is, it does not need oxygen and the functions of lens well very simple refraction and accommodation let's talk about these two for a second refraction is defined as the bending of light when it passes from one medium to another so here we have the lens right now when light passes through the lens right it bends it bends when it passes from one medium to another and that is exactly the function of the lens right the cornea and the lens both have a similar function they bend light they refract light and they refract light for the purpose of focusing it on the retina right and the other function which you studied that is accommodation what is accommodation accommodation is the property of a lens by which it helps us visualize things which are near this is a very important property of the lens it can commonly be found in one of two configurations right it can be either very very flat right or it can be very very round and the shape is actually controlled by the ciliary body through its suspensory ligaments here i just drew a simple diagram um, here's the ciliary muscle right and and these are the suspensory ligaments right so here is a very strange thing what happens is when these muscles contract these fibers loosen right and the re and the answer to it was really really simple see when a muscle contracts see let's let's draw a biceps muscle here we know that when the biceps muscle contract it'll get shorter and thicker it'll go something like this right and when it relaxes it will turn into something flatter it will turn into something longer and flatter probably something like that okay so contraction causes it to become thick relaxation causes it to become thin apply it exactly to the scenario I just made three sets of ciliary muscles here and I label them relaxed, normal and contracted. Let's first talk about the normal one, right? And then we'll compare the relaxed and contracted states. You see, we have a lens here, right? And these lens have these suspensory ligaments which are attached to the muscle, right? Now, if this muscle was to contract and we know that when muscles contract as we saw in the previous uh, example they get thicker right so see these fibers which were originally up here they kind of go down right and so if here is the lens these muscle fibers will kind of go th these muscle fibers will kind of come down and as a result these suspensory ligaments will be a bit loose right they will not be as tight as before and same as the case here they will go up from the original position and these 
strings, these uh, suspensory ligaments will not be as much contracted. As a result, the lens would be more circular, right? It would bend light more. And that is exactly what happens in accommodation. In accommodation, we contract the ciliary muscle, which results into the lens getting thicker and have and have more refractive power. Compare that to a relaxed state. You see, in relaxed state, these muscle fibers bunch together and they get thinner. And as a result, these fibers, look at the original position, right? These fibers have to get stretched even more than their original position. They kind of get pulled towards the outside. As a result, you have very tight, very tensed suspensory ligaments, which will force the lens into a long shape, right? In this case, you will find the lens like this. Instead of, compare it to the, to the first one, right? In this case, you will find the lens like this. And these fibers would be very, very tensed in a very high tension. Relaxing your ciliary muscles would pull on the lens and it would cause it to become long right and less thick compare that to when you contract your ciliary muscle it will result into a thicker lens a longer lens will have less refractive power right it will not bend the light as much and the reason why we need to change the shape of lens is because sometimes we want to see stuff which is near and sometimes we want to see stuff which is far away right and it's very necessary for the lens to be able to do that these ciliary muscles are actually supplied by the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system that is a very important point you should keep in mind so under the influence of the parasympathetic system when the ciliary muscles contract it it causes the lens to go round right it increases the refractive power and when parasympathetic system is deactivated, the muscles relax and as a result, the lens is stretched, it is pulled and we have a thinner lens which has less refractive power and we can see far away stuff better, right? Parasympathetic helps us to see near things. Sympathetic system or uh, the absence of parasympathetic system, it'll help us see things which are far away. And I think that's it, right? And the next lectures, we will be studying diseases of the lens, specifically one of the most common diseases called cataracts, right? And yeah, see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.